Wisdom. 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 Reading from the Old Testament, from the Hebrew Scriptures. Be reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. One of the many wonderful prophecies of the Messiah to come. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. Then from the New Testament, I'll be reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. God always blesses the reading and the hearing of this his most holy and precious word. Amen. What a wonderful time of year this is. I go back to my childhood every Christmas Eve and think of the wonder and the awe of Christmas Eve night, Christmas morning, and not just the, the, the thing with the presents, although that's nice, but that's not what Christmas is really all about, just the giving of those gifts. Those are a symbol of the gift that God gave to us, and that's what Christmas is really all about. The presents we give each other, those are just in response to the love of God. And what God has done for us. We give presents to each other every year. I wonder, uh, do we ever give a gift to Jesus? Do we ever give him what he really wants to give of our hearts? That's what he really wants for Christmas. The gift of our hearts, the gift of our lives, giving ourselves to him. But something very special about this whole week that changes people's attitudes, people's way they treat each other, it has to do with stars, it has to do with angels. And there are angels all around us. You know that? I saw a couple in Fort Wayne yesterday. In Fort Wayne, I saw angels. <laughs> One was at a Salvation Army. He was ringing a bell, but he had some rhythm. He had jazz. 
He was singing with the little kids. They came up to him and he was ringing the bell and singing and dancing. And I would just look at him and I, I had to put something in. Give him a little extra. And I said, that's what Christmas is all about. That spirit of giving, of love, of reaching out to one another. But it all comes back to the baby Jesus. So I want to share with you some things from the Gospel of Luke here that tell us about the birth of Jesus because it's, it's such a familiar story and great story. And Jeff Guy said uh, to me, where's Jeff at? Where'd he go? He's over here. He says this morning, I bet you know what you're going to preach about, don't you? Today. I said, yeah, usually Christmas and Easter, it's pretty easy to figure those two out, what your theme is. Although sometimes I'll say to Judy the night or two before Easter, Christmas, I say, oh, what am I going to preach about? She goes, oh, here we go again. <laughs> you know, the story doesn't change, does it? But what happens is the story changes us. The story doesn't change. But we, at certain points in our lives, hear the story new because we're at different places in our lives and it touches us perhaps as never before. In verse 1 it says, A decree went out in those days from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. So pretty heavy duty people in verse, verse 1. The most powerful man on earth. Caesar, he was the first of the Caesars, Caesar Augustus. He ruled what was then known as the world. Now, it was mostly the Western world. It didn't include China and some of those, but everything else, Europe and, and Eurasia, so to speak, was all part of the Roman Empire. He was the most powerful man on earth. So that's how the birth of Jesus starts, with this most powerful man on earth, Caesar. And he makes a decree, a law, that everybody has to go and be registered because there's going to be a census taken. We still take censuses today, don't we? Did we do one this year? I think we did one this year. This year. Yeah, but they started this year. In the and uh, and they do that for several reasons. But uh, Caesar did it because he wanted to get a real count of all the people in his countries, wherever they were, so that he could collect more taxes from them. <laughs> now, what's interesting? I was doing some reading on this, and actually, the taxes didn't get taken for a while yet. Something happened in his plan, and he just, he just gets people registered. The taxing doesn't take place for a little while yet. Something must have interfered that got him off course or something, I don't know. But in history, it says there wasn't any taxes for a few years after this. But he got them registered, so he knew who they were, and then he based his taxes on that. 